Hey, hey, party people. This is Unit 3 Review Part 2, Multiplying and Dividing Fractions. It's crazy. Cats and dogs living together. Let's take a look at item 14. Here we have two mixed numbers, and we're being asked to multiply them. Remember, with multiplication, you don't have to do any wacko inverse operation, reciprocal, invert the number, blah, blah, blah. We just have to do numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. But what? We've got mixed numbers. Well, that's okay, because we know how to convert a mixed number into a fraction. A fraction greater than 1, but a fraction nonetheless. If I have 1 and 1 third, that 1 whole is 3 thirds plus 1 third more gets me 4 thirds. And I can multiply that by 1 and 3 fifths. If I'm counting in fifths, that 1 whole is 5 fifths plus 3 more fifths. That would be 8 fifths. Now, bad news, I cannot do any kind of cross simplification. 8 and 3, no common factors but 1. 4 and 5, no common factors but 1. So from here, I'm just going to have to do some straight up multiplication. 8 times 4 is 32. And 5 times 3 is 15. Now, I have a product, but it's greater than 1. Um, it, it's that old um, improper fraction kind of an idea, and we need to simplify it. Well, let me think about this. If I have 32 fifteenths, that means I have 15 fifteenths and another 15 fifteenths. That's 30 fifteenths, right? and then another 2 fifteenths more. Well, what's that going to look like? 1 whole plus 1 whole plus 2 fifteenths. 2 and 2 fifteenths, brothers and sisters. Give it up. I know. I'm awesome. Next on the hit parade. Um, okay, let's take a look at item 17. We have 1 third divided by 7. And that one-third, you can see at the bottom, I've got one whole divided into thirds. Let's say I'm looking at this one-third right here. Um, we want to divide in seven ways. Now, if I divide one of the thirds seven ways, I have, to, I have to continue and do that with all the thirds. And we'll see. Oh, not too bad. Not as good. In your imagination, pretend those are all equal, equal amounts. And what we've done is taken um, a th um, and uh, we've really taken the thirds and made the groups of sevenths. If we look at that, we can also see, okay, there's that shortcut, inverse operation, Invert the second factor, multiply, um, and we can represent it 1 out of 21 as we look at that whole. So if we take a third and we divide it seven ways, we end up with 1 out of 21 equal parts for that whole. We're getting there. Okay. Let's look at some problem solving. Of the stamps in Malie's collection, 12 out of 35 are from Asia. Of the Asian stamps, 5 sixteenths are from Thailand. So 5 sixteenths of the Asian stamps, and those are 12 out of 35. What fraction of Malie's stamps are from Thailand? So we need to find 5 sixteenths of 12 over 35. Again, what we're really looking at here is multiplication because we want 5 sixteenths of a group that is the size in this case of the fraction 12 over 35. Now unless you want to end up in crazy crazy fraction land this is one of the wonderful places where you are going to step forward and say I am going to cross simplify 5 and 35 oh yeah can both be divided by 5 and we end up with those quotients. 12 and 16 can both be divided by 4. We end up with these quotients. And now we have something definitely simpler. 1 times 3, still 3. And 4 times 7, 
that's 28. So, so now we've got easy math fact stuff going on. And I do have to think to myself, well, 3 and 28, are there any factors besides 1 where we could simplify? And the answer is no. 2 won't work, 3 won't work, and 1 doesn't change anything. So 3 out of 28, or 3 28ths of Malie's stamps happen to be from Thailand. And last but not least, we have an extended response that asks us to, to look at a rectangle with a length of three and a half feet and a width of one and one eighth feet. Um, the first thing it asks us to do is produce a predicting. So based on the numbers we have, do we think the area is going to be greater than or less than three and a half feet? This is a good question. Um, let's think of the formula we know that helps us find the area of a rectangle. Area equals length times width. We, we want to find the area in this case and we're saying we want to we want to think to ourselves, okay, one and one eighth times three and a half. We want to know is that area going to be greater than or less than three and a half? Well, how can we predict that? We predict it by looking at the first factor here. One and one eighth is greater than one, so that three and a half we are going to multiply more than one time. More than one time means we end up with a product greater than the factors that we have. So we can safely predict whatever the area is, it's going to be more than three and a half. Maybe not a lot more, but more. Where do we go from here? From here, we take those mixed numbers, we turn them into fractions, and we multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. One and one eighth is nine eighths. 8 eighths plus 1 eighth, 9 eighths. And 3 and a half is 7 halves. Yeah, yeah, 3, 6, 7 halves. Sadly, oh, so sadly, there's no cross simplifying. 8 and 7 don't have any common factors except 1. Same with 9 and 2. So we're just going to have to straight up 9 times 7 63. 8 times 2 is 16. And we're still got to do a little bit of simplifying here as well because this is a fraction greater than 1. Well, how many 16s can we get out of 63? 16 and 16 is 32. 16 three times is, what, 48? 58. 58. Uh, I can't get four times, but I can get three. Yep, 16 sixteenths, 16 sixteenths, and 16 sixteenths. That's 48 sixteenths, which leaves me with 58, 10 more, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, um, plus 5 more, 15 sixteenths. as my actual area of the sign, 3 and 15 sixteenths feet, which is more than 3 and a half. It's almost 4 feet. Don't panic. Breathe. Remember, the great thing about video tutorials, watch again, pause, watch, pause, stop, think, talk to somebody. Um, take your time. It's going to be okay.